Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're, we're returning to Fog of War Sudoku today in the form of Shadow Circles by Celery. And this has been recommended by some folk over on the Discord server as being truly very original. I have had a skim read of the rules. Um, I've got I've got no idea, by the way, of how difficult this is because um, I, well, I forgot to look whether it was on Logic Masters Germany is the honest truth. Um, but it's certainly a very unusual rule set involving a sort of amalgam of Fog of War and the famous circles in Sudoku rule, which basically says that circles, the digit you put in a circle tells you how many circles contain that digit. Um, so anyway, we'll have a look at this in a moment or two's time. Um, just a few things um, to mention first. A big thank you if you joined us last night on for the Chance of Sonar stream. Um, we made a bit of progress. I think <laughs> there seemed to be a war going on in Super in the, in, in, in the Super Thanks. Um, uh, people wanting us to go back to an earlier part of the game. People wanting us to plow on forward and see if we could still complete the game without knowing all the information we were apparently allowed to know. Uh, Mark and I didn't have a clue what we were doing, um, but we did enjoy it and we enjoyed your company. So thank you if you joined us for that. Um, other news, our Kickstarter just has a few days to run now. Um, this is, um, this is well, this is Fog of War related, isn't it? This is to create this story with loads of Fog of War Sudokus in and around it, most of them by Sandra and Nala, um, but with uh, three extras at the moment by Chili, Fistimafel and Jay Dyer, and we're within about two hundred dollars of uh, of meeting the next stretch goal, which will mean that there's another author, and that we get another puzzle added to the pack, which is very cool. Um, so do have a look at that. Try and remember to put a link on the screen, and then over on Patreon, we've got our one hundred snack Doku fest. These are these four by fours that sort of teach you how to do variant Sudoku. Absolutely brilliant. I finished uh, recording my solves. I, I tested them by. Um, by re just recording myself solving them. So <laughs> I finished that yesterday, I had a lot of fun. So that, that video will, will appear on Patreon once um, once the competition closes on the 20th of December. Closing in on Christmas, aren't we? The other thing on Patreon is my solve of Totally Normal Cat's Broken Secrets, um, which is a very hard puzzle. That, that, that's a very, very clever puzzle, um, but it took me a long time. Now I've got a few birthday announcements to do today. So I'm going to wish start by wishing Michael um, a happy 38th birthday. And Michael, it was lovely to hear that you've got back into Sudoku. You've fallen back in love with it. Now you know about variant Sudoku. I think loads of people would be in that category. You know, they've sort of they've got used to doing classic Sudoku in the newspaper or online, and they don't really know that variant Sudoku exists. So I hope more people like you discover this wonderful hobby. Um, Next, Nico Nicola. Yeah, it must be Nicola because you're in Italy, aren't you, Nicola? You turned 19 today. And I know this because your girlfriend, Paola, wrote to us. Um, and I hope that you have chocolate cake. I'm sure, I'm sure over down there in Italy, you're going to find some very good, very good sustenance in that regard. Uh, next, Kyle, you've turned 23 today, I think, and you are graduating today. Many congratulations, my friend. I know this because uh, your sister Jess wrote to us um, and she had a special message for you, which I shall now read. Um, Thank you for always helping me with my maths homework. I love you and I hope that you have fun at the Foo Fighters concert. So Kyle, it sounds like you're in for quite a good birthday. And um, indeed, I, I hope the graduation ceremony goes well. Um, next, over in Canada, twins birthdays today, 14 years old, Annalise and Spencer. And I know it's your birthday because your mum, Andrea, wrote to us and told us about about the fact and that you're having ice cream cake. And maybe she can persuade you to have chocolate cake next time. I hope so. Um, but I hope you have a great birthday today. And then finally, Christina, your son Joel wrote to us to tell us that you've turned 44 today and he describes you as incredible at everything you do and you're constantly busy helping people while still finding time to solve puzzles. So Christina, um, many happy returns and I hope that I hope that Joel has sorted out some suitable sustenance to celebrate the day. Now, all that said and done, let's have a look at the rules of Shadow Circles and see what Celery has in store for us. 
uh, they are, the rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put the digits 1 to 9 once each in every row, in every column, and in every 3x3 three three box. The grid is covered with fog. Yes, we can see that. Placing correct digits will reveal the fog around that digit. So if we got this digit in the middle, it would reveal all the fog from those cells. Sort of a minesweeper type rule. Um, and then it says guessing is not required. Yeah, so some people do these fog of war puzzles. I, I, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this. And I'm sure for most of you will think, why is he saying that? But no, we do get emails from people who do these. Um, and maybe they don't listen to the introductions or something and they just guess the digits and reveal all the fog and then solve the puzzle underneath. No, 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 that's not how these work. The idea is that Celery has created logic in here that will allow us to say, work out what that digit is. So it's completely logical how the fog gets revealed, unless you cheat. Now, a digit in a red circle indicates exactly how many red circles contain that digit. So if that contained a four, uh, which it probably can't. Let's say if it could, if it contained an eight, there would have to be eight red circles in this puzzle. Um, okay. Additionally, a digit in a red circle must reappear at least once in its eight surrounding cells. The two given circles contain the same digit. Right. So these two are the same digit. And what we're being told there is that one of those eight cells surrounding this circle is equal to the digit in this circle. And the same is true here, um, which is a very peculiar rule. Digits along a purple arrow sum to the value in the attached circle. So we can see that there's, there's some length of arrow there. We can, what we can't see is it, if it then turns. Um, but imagine the arrow did end there. What we would do is we would sum those three digits up and write that number in the circle. That's how arrows work. And red circles may or may not have arrows attached. Okay, these ones do seem to have arrows attached, but they don't have to. Um, and arrows do not share cells and do not cross. Okay, so we can't... Um, we have to keep the arrows sort of apart from one another and that's all the rules so do have a go the way to play as usual is to click the link under the video that will take you to a page that looks exactly like this one where you can play the puzzle on whichever device takes your fancy but now i get to play let's get cracking the first thing i'm going to do actually is write this square here has to be at least six because we said we don't know where this arrow goes well we, we sort of don't know it's definitely going here then it's going into that square then it's definitely going into that square it can't then go there because that would these four digits would all have to be different because they're all in the same box and they would then add up to at least 10. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10. So that won't work because I can't write 10 into this square. But this could go it could go up there, it could go up here. It could even take a second cell in box 3 uh, and still and still be okay. For example, if this was 1, 2, 3 and this was a 1 we would write seven in here. But what we do know is because these are definitely all different, that is at least a six. Um, now, did it say that, that these two are the same number? I thought I read that. Uh, yeah, the two given circles contain the same digits. So these digits are the same. And then there was the other rule which said something about this digit and this digit. So we better give this, should we give this a color? Um, let's make these green. So these digits have to reappear in one of the eight cells. Well, this one, obviously it can't reappear in its own box, can it? And it can't reappear in its own row. So, so green is in one of those two squares. And then this one, it can't reappear in its own box or its own column or its own row. Ah, well... Ah, no, okay, because green, right, sorry, so it's not in any of those squares, but it's also not here, is it? Because we've already got green in box five already. So it's in one of those two, which I don't have a way of pencil marking. I don't like pencil marking things across boxes like this. So if that was green, then this would be green. Green. 
Um, sorry, I'm just trying to understand how this is in any way restricted. Uh, hang on a minute. And maybe I do have to. I'm going to mention Just let me pencil mark this for a second or two. Um, what, I think I've missed a rule here. Hang on. Uh, just a red circle. So there's got to be at least six red circles. There aren't nine red circles, actually, I've just realised. Um, I'll explain why I've just noticed that in a moment. I just want to reread the rules. Additionally, an digit must reappear. These two are the same. Purple arrows. I don't think I can know anything about this purple arrow. I mean, one thought I had was whether it could be a one cell arrow, but I don't think it can because these digits would be the same. And they, but we already know this digit is in these two cells, so that's not going to be acceptable. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you why I know. Um, in fact, that's quite interesting. So I can take nine out. To, it might be to do with ones or something, because in this box, none of these squares can be this red digit, which means that the red the red digit sits in one of those squares. So in other words, green is in one of these squares. But there's this rule that if 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 one of these was a red circle digit, it has to have an adjacent version of the digit. So even if we put if we if we made that the the red digit, none of those squares could repeat that digit, could they? And the same is here. None of these squares, none of these squares, none of these squares. So wherever this digit does appear in box nine, it cannot be a circled red digit. Now there are um, only nine of any Sudoku digit in the grid. So once you remove one possibility of a red circle for this digit, it can't be a nine anymore. So it's now a maximum of eight. Now that does mean that these three digits must contain a one. Because if these were two, three and four, they would add up to nine, which we've just worked out is impossible. And right, I see. OK, we can't have eight here either, can we? Because I'm going to claim. I think that's right. Um, if this was eight, we know this box doesn't contain a red circle. So this there are nine Sudoku boxes. So this box would need to contain a red circle. And from by Sudoku, it would be in one of these squares. But again, a red circle with with an eight in it, if this is an eight, needs to have another eight touching it. So one of these would have to be eight and one of these would have to be eight. But if this is eight, that's not going to work. So, so this is now six or seven and we can improve this again. Now it's got to have a two on it because if this was one, three, four, which is the next minimum, it would add up to eight. Uh, no, I was going to say, and now it has to stay, in, it still doesn't have to stay in the box. It could still go here if this was a one. One, two, three, one would work. Um, right, but if we can get rid of one, oh, nearly. If we can get rid of one more box that can't have a red circle in it, we will be in business, won't we? Hmm, how do we do that? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm wondering whether what I'm meant to do is almost highlight all the cells in the grid that either can or can't be red circles. I'm going I think I'm gonna try that. I've got nothing nothing no other inspiration is um is coming to me here so right how am i going to do this so let's highlight all the cells in the grid that can't be red that can't be red circles so obviously we can't repeat when i say red circles by the way i mean this red circle so if this was seven i'm going to try and locate all the cells in the grid 
that can't be red circled sevens because there should be seven red circled sevens if this is a seven if this is a six there should be six red circled sixes so we can instantly take some cells out can't we not nothing in box nine can be red and circled nothing in box three can be red and circled or equal to this digit and red and circled. nothing in that row can be nothing in this column can be nothing in the rest of this box nothing in this row ah this has not gone very well uh, oh we know that the green digit is in one of these two squares in box five so we can improve upon that slightly this uh actually how am i going to do this let's um maybe yellow yeah that's quite clear isn't it um this can't be a red can't be the red circle digit that's the same number as this because it would need to touch in one of those squares it would have to have the same number that could only be here but that's going to duplicate this number in box seven so that is not a red circle digit these are not red circled in fact, nothing, nothing can be red circled unless it can get into another box. So all of these are taken out because that one, for example, would need to put a red circle digit in one or put, put the same digit as it in one of these squares, which couldn't happen. Mm, yeah, no, that's right. That, the same must be true of the bottom row now. Once, yeah, it's quite, it's very clever this. So because we've sort of taken out these all of these column digits, all of these, well, not that one, but all of these must be yellow. I want to say that must be yellow. That one can be a red circle digit because it would be allowed to touch row seven, column three. That one can't be. Nothing in the middle of a box can be, of course. That That's an obvious point. Uh, that's no that might be okay if, if that one is it's quite di it's quite difficult then isn't it because we haven't got that many cells left one two is there something saying one of these couldn't be red no because whichever one if the, one of these was red circled it would have a natural friend in this one That one can't be because green is in its column. That that one can't be because it, it has no there's no partner it could have that would, would, would avail itself. I mean it could have this one, but these two digits would then be the same. So hang on, how are we doing now? The these ones are not allowed to be. So actually One, two, three. Hmm, maybe you can't get to seven. Maybe that's the point. How would we get to seven? If that's a red circle digit, let's actually just make it red and circled. If that's a red circle digit, then all of these are removed because the only way one of these could be red and circled is if it touched, for example, if that was red circled, in order for it to be red circled, you need to have that digit now in one of these squares, which would have to be here. But we're saying if that's red circled, that's not possible. So loads of things get taken out. So if that's red circled, one, two, three, four, you can't, we, we can only just get to six. You'd have to get to six by that being red circled, that being red circled, and that being red circled. And that would work right so it's either it's either six whoopsie with this being red circled or that's red circled so i suppose this is always a red circle digit then now this isn't red circled now so that's the that's the hypothesis we're running so if that's right one, two, three. Yeah, and if I do put red circle digits into both of those squares, look, which I could do, I remove those two, those two's ability to be 
red circle digits. So that one would be one, two, three, four, five, six again. You can't get to seven. That's the point. Good grief. I'm just going to double check that. So if, if this is red circled and I don't have two in there, there's no, well, there's, there's, I could, I can't own, I could have one in there, but that's losing a degree of freedom, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six is still the maximum. So six, you can't beat six. That's the point. Good grief. Right. So what does that mean? Well, that's good. That's going to at least clear fog, which I presume is the point of this. So you can't make these seven. They have to be six, I think. Yes, that cleared fog, didn't it? What? Oh, it's really hard to see what it's actually done. But I don't know whether I want to lose my yellow yellowification. Maybe I can change the colour of yellow to be... I want to see what I've actually... What have I... Oh, well, I suppose one thing I've revealed is that that must be a one, two, three triple. Because it, it now can't extend into this square or this square. Because these the minimum sum of these is six. Um... Right, and we've got other red circlage as well, haven't we? Ah, and this is red circled. And this isn't red circled. Right, that's going to be important. Because now, in... How could... This has got to touch... Well, it's got to touch its own value, hasn't it? So it could be there, but then that wouldn't be red circled. One, two, three. Four. You can't get to six if you do that, I don't think. I think if this isn't a six, you can't get to six. So what I'm suggesting is if you go if we go with six here. which meets the criteria that this needs to see a six. So this is then not a six, which means this can't be a six anymore, because the only way that can be a six is if I can put a six into one of these three squares, which I can't do on the hypothesis. This is a six. So I've got one, two, three, four as a maximum, and I can't put two in here because this is already a six. So I could scrub this one out and put two there. I'd still only get to five. Right, so that's a six. Oh, good grief. Look what's going on now. <laughs> okay, but this is interesting because now these two can't be sixes anymore. And that means that these two can't be circled sixes at all because they would need to have a friend here that was a six. So in fact, these... This this two by two completely gets loses its ability to have ah no that's no it does you can't put a circled six here because it's already a six in the row gosh it's quite easy to make a mistake with this right so where are my six circled sixes now then that that one can't be one so it's got to be these it's got to be those exact digits right that's good so there are so this is this is a new a new circled digit and. OK, I'm going to get rid of all my black shading because I, I can't really see what's under the fog by doing that. I can get rid of the, the grey flashes in these. So they, these turned out, to, turned out to both be sixes. This is fascinating. Isn't it weird? Now, there's a one, two, three triple coming off a six arrow. That's not a one, two, three triple. That's one, two, four, five. Um... What's that one doing? This one is interesting. That's also a two cell arrow, I think, because it's definitely going into this square. Now, where, where does it go if it's a three cell arrow or larger? It can't go there, look, because that would be at least a four. And four plus one plus two is, is more than six, knowledge bomb. So it doesn't go there. And if it goes there, it seems to have to meander off down here. And there's no way you can make so many different digits add up to only six. So this is a two cell arrow. It must be one, two, four and five. Uh, I was about to write one, two, four and five there, which is total and utter gibberish. Uh, don't commit 
the sin of gibberish when you're trying to solve Sudoku. Um, six is in one of those, six is in one of these. Uh, what do I do now? Sorry, I can't see it. One second. Uh, this this must be doable. Oh no, what's going on? Um, I'm rubbish at this rule. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. It can't be that, can it? That's got to see itself. Oh, it is that. Oh, oh, that's be what a beautiful digit this is. Oh, that's very clever, Celery. That's a three. Okay, and we, the, the reason this is a three is it's a circle digit, so it's got to reappear in one of these squares. Which one shall we pick? It can't appear in its own box. It can't appear in its own row. It can't appear in its own column. It can't be equal to six, so it's not that one. And it can't go on its own arrow, because if it goes on its own arrow, this square would be a zero. So it must go there, so it's a one, two, or a three, but it's adding up two different numbers. So it, it must be, this must be a one, two pair adding up to three. That must be a three, and that clears more fog. What? It's just beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. That's the sort of thing I imagine you find as a setter. And you must just you must just know that you have to persevere with the puzzle now to make it become reality, because it's, it's such a gorgeous point. Um, We've now got a one, two, three triple in column five, the three of which is down here. So that's not three, which means we've now got a virtual one, two pair in column four, because there must be a one or a two on this two cell six arrow. And there's obviously a one or a two here. So none of these squares could be one or two. In fact, we could have already deduced that. In fact, that's the, that, 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 that virtual pair is absolutely hopeless. Sorry, I thought that was going to be an intelligent thing to say. Um, We've got a circled three, but that's not a circled three. Uh, <laughs> I don't really want to go plotting around where red circled threes go, can go, do I? Is there actually any? Uh, there is a bit of a restriction, actually. Hmm. It does occur to me that if you put circle digits in these cells, because they're on the border, you know, the, the, the existence of this being a three stops you having red circle digits here that are three. Well, in fact, that did as well. Because you couldn't have a touching digit. Well, unless that one and that one were three, it might be worth doing. Let's just have a quick look. Where where could we put the other two? Oh yeah, look as well. This three is put, putting a three down here. Now these definitely, the, one of whichever one of these is three, can't be circled, can it? Because to be circled, it would need to touch another three, which it couldn't do, because this three is too high in the grid. Uh, this is yeah there's, there's definitely something here i haven't i haven't i haven't seen it all but but everywhere i look i'm suddenly realizing you can't put circled threes so how do we do this are we going to are we going to use that shading again that we did last time so and what exactly are we shading are we shading where threes can go or are we shading where circled threes can go let's do Let's do circled threes. So, right, okay, so these can't, obviously, nothing can be, well, these can't be circled threes because that one isn't circled. These can't be circled threes for the reasons that we said before. One and two. In fact, anything that's in white space, anything that's in white space is not a circled digit, so that might do some damage. All of these. There is a three down here, but it's not circled. We can see that because we've cleared the fog. Um, 
Okay, so let's highlight those cells to start with. Can we see that? Ooh, it's not brilliant, but it's probably clear enough. So, well, these can't be circle threes. Because where would you put the attached three to any of these cells? It can't. There just isn't the possibility to put one in. So they are not circled threes. Ah, those are not circled threes because they can't touch anything else in another, uh, any other three. That can't touch another three. These two can't touch another three. Oh, hang on. There's a three in this box already. So that, not, not, oh, look, hang on. Yeah, this the fact that there is a three in one of these squares is taking out all sorts of things, all sorts of gubbins that can't be threes. That can't be a three. So it can't be a circle three um, because that would need this square to be a circle three. Right. That's weird. <laughs> That's absolutely weird. So we're just left with... Well, these can't be circle threes. They don't touch another box. So these are the only positions that can be circle threes, but we need two of them. Yeah, so if we made that one a circle three, there would be no cells left in the grid to be the other circle three. So that's not a circle three. And these two are the only ones, I think, that can be... <laughs> that's just amazing. Oh, my goodness. Right, let's get rid of all of our black shading. Uh, we can probably get rid of our yellow shading. We've got another circle that's appeared. But I'm sure... I'm not sure, but we might be able to do Sudoku because we've got, well, yes, there's a three in one of those squares by Sudoku using these two threes. So three, yeah. Where's three in box five is a good question because we've got a three up looking up at this, this column. So I think that's a three. That's revealed more circles. In fact, there's another the relatively large circle there which is slightly surprising uh hang on let me just double click threes surely we can no there's a three down here hmm. no okay maybe i can't do any better with threes uh Okay, <laughs> um, well, what does that mean? It's going to mean something about this digit, isn't it? It's, that's what it's going to mean. This, this is a red circle digit that is at least, can that be one? So if this is one, it, well, this is at least four. So I, th I think we know what we're going to do now, don't we? It's at least four. It can't be six. So it's probably four or five. It's probably four, frankly, but I, I can't prove that. Um, yeah, I, I don't quite know how to do this. So let's make that, so that digit's yellow. Now, what are we saying then? That digit has to see itself, doesn't it? Because that is a circle digit. So that digit is seeing a yellow cell in one of these two positions. So that needs a flash. One of those two. Probably this one. But I'm not sure about that. Um, yellow... Ah, so yellow is in one of those two squares. I don't know whether to try and plot where the yellow, where the red circled yellows can be. Because so they, they, that in fact they can't exist in this box at all, can they? Because yellow itself is in one of these two squares, which doesn't touch another box. God, I almost thought I'd seen something clever then, and I haven't quite. I was going to say you can't even put yellow, a, a red circled yellow in box nine, but you can if it's exactly there. 
It can't go anywhere else. Okay, so maybe that's a better way of doing it. Let's plot. Let's plot with yellow. Oh, do I want to do it with yellow? I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not being very decisive. Let's plot with yellow where all of the red circled yellows could be. And maybe that gets to a cap for what this number could be. This certainly can't be because it would need to touch itself there and we know that yellow is in one of those. So that's not that's not good. So we're trying to find duplicates red circled for this digit. Now. Now, if well, one, two and three are not this digit, so this doesn't work. Nothing in a corner can ever work. Can that square be yellow? No, it can't touch another digit. So so this side of the grid the only only a single cell in the in the final three columns can be the red circle digit. Now, what about none of these have, have got red circles, so box seven is out totally. Box four can that be? No. Well, mm, uh, no, no. If if that was red circled yellow. Where would its counterpart go? Oh, oh, it could go there, couldn't it? Oh, that's rotten. Yeah, okay, because it doesn't have to be circled. The digit that touches the red circle doesn't itself have to be a red circle. Um, that one can't be. Oh, is that true even? Maybe that's not true. So if it went there, there, and that was a red circle digit, could you put that red circle digit here? I mean, you'd be taking away from this one. Yeah, this is the, ah, this is tricky. I think I think what I need to do is a, is a more. I think I'm doing this in an in a less than efficient way. I think I literally have to again highlight the digits that could possibly be red circled. And, and do it diligently. So none of these can be, none of these can be, nothing in box nine can be except that one, I think. Nothing in box six can be. I'm just double checking it as I'm doing it to make absolutely certain that I agree with myself. Nothing in a corner ever can be. Nothing in a white cell ever can be apart from that white cell, which might be able to be, because that has actually got a circle in it. Nothing in a white circle, nothing in this one's row, nothing in this one's box, nothing in this, nothing that's touched, that's in a, in a corner, nothing in a corner. Oh, see, look, look how much of the grid we're isolating here. There's loads of it that's just disappearing. So what's this telling us? Um, well, I don't think this can be very big. <laughs> uh, that doesn't seem because there, there, there are just not enough areas of the grid, are there? We could have one, two, three. That's possible. But that's taking away these two at the top. Four. You could have those two as well. So five, you could get to five. But if you get to five, that one's then out. How would you get, and maybe a better question is how would you get to seven? Because we know six is impossible. So can, can we create seven shaded circles for this digit in this pattern? If that's in, everything there is taken out because these the, I mean if we, we could put one in one of these but it couldn't touch that digit again could it so if that's in one two three four is the absolute maximum but if that's not in if 
this one here is not in. Then you can achieve the maximum you can achieve in that pattern is to have two diagonally here. You could take one up there. But that knocks this one out now because it can't touch its, itself on this side of the line. Two, three. I want to say five. I think five is the maximum. It definitely can't get to six, let alone seven. So all I've been able to prove is that that digit is four or five. And that that digit is one or two. which mm, I don't know actually can I do any better than that yeah I can do slight okay all right so now I'm going to think about ones and twos that digit I'm going to focus on next. Okay, I'm going to give that one its own color. So that one, where does that go in this box? I think that is a good question because I think it has to go there. Can't go in these squares because there's a one, two looking at them. And it can't go in this column because there's a one, two, three looking at that. So that is a blue one or two. Which means that's a blue one or two. Right, so this one, we'll give that one a colour. What should we give that one? Um, purple. Okay, so that can be purple. So purple is in one of those two. Um, actually, that's not such a silly thought. Because whatever, so purple, purple goes in that domino. Is it? Oh goodness, it's very hard to see this, but purple goes in this domino. But that will crystallize the nature of the four or the five on this six arrow, won't it? And that will be the opposite of what this is. So what I'm thinking is if, if purple is one and this is a one five pair, then that's a four and that's purple. And if purple is two, and this is a two, four pair, then this is five, and that is purple. So this is always purple, which means that's purple. This is blue. Purple is in one of those squares in column eight. Purple is in one of these squares, isn't it? I've got a horrible feeling this isn't gonna do anything. Oh, my phone's buzzing at me. Uh, let me just read that, sorry. Um, okay, no, that's fine. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> um, okay. So has that actually helped us or not? I fear it might not have done. So purple, no, what I was about to say was total and utter nonsense as well. Um, how do we do this? <laughs> this is tricky. This is tricky. Is there a reason that... I don't know. I'm stuck. My brain is manfully resisting. Telling me what on earth I meant to what on earth I meant to know as a result of all this. Um, I thought that was going to be a really quite a cunning step with this um, this purplification idea. Unless, have we done something in this column now? I don't think so. It probably, knowing me, it's now Sudoku, isn't it, that I'm 
underappreciating. In what way am I underappreciating it? How do we do this? Um, okay, I don't know. Nah, I still not got it. Still not got it. Well done if you're seeing what I'm not here. That's not got an arrow coming out of it. So does that mean that could be like a circled one or something? If that's a one. Oh. Oh, that's really clever. Okay, I, I was nowhere near that for many moments. Right. This is the next question, isn't it? What is the value of this circle? I, I even said this. I even said that if this was this, I could see it had a profound effect on everything. But I couldn't see why for a moment this would need to be this. But uh, you have to turn the question round. You've got to turn the question round. What? Well, I'm actually not so sure now. Well, the question I want to ask, I think, is what number goes in here? That is a totally legitimate question. And with the view to saying, must this be yellow? Now, if this was not yellow, what number could it be? Well, it can't be three. And it can't be one or two, which is the thing I hadn't appreciated. Because if this is one or two, I need to put one or two in this square, which I definitely cannot do. So this is at least a four. Now, if this is now not the same variety of digit as this one, then that implies that this grid can be filled somehow with an awful lot of circles <laughs> that I just, it feels very, it feels incredibly difficult to me to believe. I don't know how I'm gonna prove it, that these are not the same. How am I going to prove that? It'd have to be, if this was four, say, and that was five, I'd have to be able to put five circled fives into the grid. I mean, it's... This one we know could... And maybe I'd do it the other way around, because I think that one could have been five if that was four. If that was 5, we knew we could get to 5 by putting those two into circles, didn't we? 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, for example. That would do it. So I'd only, if, if that was true, I'd have to be able to get this to have four circled fours. But can we see that, um, well, neither of these could be circled fours. Uh, maybe that one. No, that's that's in a white cell. This is why it's so difficult because I've got this, I've got the one colored highlighting for telling me what, what this can't be. But I almost need to do it again now to think about this digit. And that's really, it's really hard to see how to do that in a natural way. I mean, if this is four and this is five, you can see none of this can create a double four across the boundary. That couldn't be, that couldn't be. Could you have double four here? Both circled. I don't know without without unwinding all of my highlighting. Um, okay, so so let's do that because I don't see another way of doing it. So what we've got to do, you see, if this, if that's yellow. Oh, going back to the old highlighting, let's try and remember that. If we, So if we can prove that this is yellow, then these can't be 
red circled. This can't be, which means none of these can be. So how on earth is it quite difficult to even achieve four? You have to do it with that one, that one, that one, and that one. That's the only way you can do it. So it's hugely restricted, but but that's all predicated on, um, so let's go forward again. That's predicated on this being the same as this. If this is different, we've got to have a whole, I've got to sh basically highlight a whole load of new stuff, haven't I? And then try and justify. So anything, again, anything in a white cell now, anything not touching another box, anything in a white cell not touching another box, anything in a white cell or not touching another box. Oh, hang on, be careful. Oh no, they're white cells, that's fine. Anything in a six is fine to take out. Anything in a three is fine to take out. Anything in a corner is fine to take out. This might be, this might get us there actually. This might get us there. Neither of these could be a, f a four because the crossing point would take you into box one where there would be that digit already. So they come out. The middle box has got, we know it's only got one circle in it. I think everything has been clear. Oh, maybe that cell, but that cell can't touch something because the left side of the line would be in the same column. So the middle box is out. There's not going to be enough room, is there? Please, <laughs> please don't let there be enough room. Um, Well, let's think about this. There isn't enough room. It, it's quite it's quite difficult to see it. If I just highlight, uh, what shall I use to highlight these squares like this for a moment? So the challenge is, can we get this digit for four circles? Now we've only got three boxes left to do this in, which which means that the circles have to touch they'd have to touch across the boundary. So you could put that one in, you could put that one in, but then when you put this one in, it can't have the same digit here in a circle or, or at all because it's, it's across that boundary. So you can't make it work. You'd have to do it like that and this can't work with this, with this being here or like this. So it doesn't work. I mean, it's quite difficult to, it, it's very difficult to see why. But I think that is proving that this is yellow. Now, if this is yellow, then we've got, well, actually, can I then go back? Having proved that, I can go back here because I've proved this is yellow. And now these, these, these get blackened. Um, this is obviously not able to be the same red circle as this. For these to be, well, that can't be a red circle now with a with with the yellow digit in it. I mean, maybe I write four in there and see if that works. No, I need to prove it is a four. I think it is a four, but I need to prove it from absolutely. So these two can't be because you'd need a four in one of these cells. So they're out. And where am I left with? This is really difficult to see. Gray cells. So that one, that one that one they can all be red circles i still need one more and i can only get it from box nine and i can only get it from one cell in box nine which is there so that must be the only way it works so this one this one this one and this one i think are all fours i think that did work right now we get rid of all this shading this is not this is a difficult and fascinating puzzle isn't it it's definitely not that easy ah four well, f oh, this is good. This is good, right. Fours come off this, so we now know blue is two. Oh, look, it's working as well. It's actually working. We're getting some traction. Four comes off these arrows, so this must be a one five pair. Uh, two is this digit, so this must be a one three pair. that's quite cool that's not a six because those two squares can't add up to six they can't be one five or two four so six goes in the corner down there 
Um, six goes in one of those two squares, probably not on the arrow, but I'm not prepared to commit to that yet. Two goes there by Sudoku. Let's make that blue just so that we can keep track of all the blues. Um, that one is seeing this, so this is one, this is five, this is five, this is one. Oh, this is good. Look, we're, due. we're getting somewhere. Um, these are seven, eight, nine into box five. We're in a weird situation now in a fog puzzle where I've almost got too many places to look. I don't really know what the where the limiting factors are now. Four. Four is over here. Five is in. So this is a four five pair. So five is in one of these two squares. Can you put five in the arrow? No, no, you can't. If that's five, it's a bit like this, this argument down here. If that's five. This clearly can't be a three cell arrow. Oh, actually, I've had a horrible. No, it can't come back into here. I was wondering whether it could sit around there and have a repeated digit on it, but it doesn't work because that's at least a four. So. And if it stays in its own box, it would add up to at least six. And if it's a two cell arrow, it can't be two, three or one, four. So, so it doesn't work, but it's quite hard to see. Apps oh, it did, it did bounce back on itself, but it couldn't be a five if it did bounce back on itself. Wow. OK, so that's seven, eight or nine. Ah, OK, look at these two digits. If they were not a one, two pair, what would they be? They'd be at least one, five. And one five and four add up to ten, so that won't work. So they must be a one two pair. This must be a seven. That's a one, that's a two. This is a seven in the middle of the grid. Oh, this is getting exciting now. Oh, this is a five by Sudoku. Right, so these digits at the top are six there are six, seven, eight, nine quadruple. Um the six of which apparently is on the left hand side. These cells are three, eight, and nine. Oh, that's oh, that's not three. Okay, one, eight, and nine into the into column three. Oh, you rotten puzzle! What's going on now? Why can't I uh, just fill this in? Um, that digit's at least a five, seven, eight, nine. Because the cell itself sees so many different numbers, it sees one, two, three, four, and six. If it's five, it would have to be a two, three pair. I don't believe it, and that's probably what it is. Then I can't see how to rule that out. Um, the, oh, the green digit was six, wasn't it? Now, actually, let's just take out all of this green furniture now because I think that we've dealt with that. And OK, don't really know where to look now. What about this column? Five, eight and nine. Ah, five in this column has to go at the top. It's a naked single or a hidden single. Couldn't go there, couldn't go there. So it must go there. Five is in a cell we don't we can't really hone in on in box number three and one two three that's seven eight or nine because it sees four that's seven eight or nine because it sees four four is in one of those two squares okay what does that mean? Um, don't know. <laughs> one. I can get little old one. Oh, that's going to clear fog as well. Oh, that can give me a six. Yeah, look, where does one go? Let's purplify all the ones just to make it very clear. Um, one in this box is placed. Four, four ones are looking into it. So that's, oh, that's one. That's six. 
now what does that mean so this is at least a seven now so it's a three cell arrow and it can't equal six seven eight nine triple in the top row makes put six in the corner no song for that but at least it's a digit and we get a we get a two i've not put two into that row yet so well that square's got to be a four or a five by mathematics to add up to one of these it can't be six so this can't be nine Is this seeing a four or a five? I'm sure it is somehow. I just oh, I've got a four or five pair in this column. Um, wow, I don't know. Okay, so how do we do this then? How do we make a scintilla more progress? We can get rid of that being yellow now. We've got two pockets of fog left misting up the heath as it were um is it going to be i don't know i'm not seeing it actually can we do all the ones somehow no we can't can we do all the twos somehow uh, we've got more twos than i realized we have nearly got all the twos there is a two in one of these squares we do the same on the other side two in one of those squares this column we've not put five into so five is in one of those two positions is there some restriction on what we can put on this arrow i mean two three looks the the favorite doesn't it that looks like it works three let's just double click threes and see if we can see anything emerging as a result i don't think there is anything Wow. <laughs> so this is look up over an hour now on a fog of war. This is properly this is properly challenging this one. Uh five, seven, eight, nine. Um Okay, may, maybe I've just got to keep going with the uh, good lifting. That that's probably what it's, it's what Mr Mr. Goodliff would want me to do, I'm sure. Uh five is down here. I don't know still not seeing it this column three seven eight and nine we just don't know enough about the big digits about seven can i do more with sevens there's a seven over here that's not exactly it i mean it feels like this arrow was meant to be the disambiguator or maybe it's the four or five pair in this column ah so that digit's actually quite high isn't it if it's not three what is it it's at least seven can't be one two if it can't be three it can't be four five or six so it's seven then and that can't be one so this is three or seven that's probably we need to think about this square i think now oh no you still can still make I think you can still make eight work. Um, Bobbins, I'm not seeing it. We might have to. We might have to color fours and fives or something like that to try and get more of a handle on how they unwind. Or it could be that I've not obeyed all the circle rules or something. Oh, it is. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, no. Look. So these ones all mutually reinforce themselves. But that four, what does that mean? That digit, that needs to see its own digit. Oh, Bobbins. Sorry. I know that you'll be cross with me about that, but I just didn't see it okay so this now is at least seven um oh well i'm pleased i'm pleased it was nothing it was nothing too dramatic four i can place now over here 
Okay. Right, here's something interesting. This can't be seven now. Oh, in fact, hmm, it is interesting. Definitely can't be seven because there's no way to make that arrow work. It can't be one, six, two, five, or three, four. So we can take seven out of here. Now, can it be eight? No, if it was eight, it would need to be one, seven, two, six, or three, five, and that doesn't work. So this is nine. Didn't clear any frog, um, but that's, that's still... A pro that's still progress and now this can't be three because that would need to be six so this is in fact seven and that worked thank goodness so this is now three and that's going to be eight and that's seven okay and we start on our jolly way again so this is eight or nine that's seven eight or nine uh do we get the one three resolved that's not eight this row seven eight and nine again isn't it oh two can be placed that's going to clear that's going to clear the remaining fog thank goodness there's now a seven eight nine triple in this column so that seems to have to be three got loads of eight nine pairs <laughs> begging to be colored i think that's a five i think by sudoku this square here is seven or eight so nine is in one of these two squares in box eight which means it's not there which means nine is in one of those two squares so it's not there Oh, this might not be the way to do this. Nine is in one of these. Yeah, look, nine is in one of these in row seven, and nine is in one of those. So nine must be in one of these, and nine can't be here. And yes, that doesn't do anything. Okay. Oh, look, this arrow's adding up to eight. That's the that's the next thing I've missed. So nine, eight. Nine must go here now. That's become a seven, eight, nine, nine, eight, one, nine, one, three, eight, nine, seven, nine, eight, eight, seven, eight, seven in the corner, five. Oh no, not five. What is it? Three. Oh, it nearly got a three in the corner. It tried. It tried very hard. That is a very clever puzzle. Is that right? Yes wow wow that was very very much more difficult than i was expecting it's not got an enormous number of solves it's very new as well from the recommendations we had i thought it was older than that um that's it's just very clever i mean it's classic celery celery's puzzles are very clever um most of the fog of war that we do tends to be gentler than that though and that had i think some quite complicated ideas in it um certainly the idea that this had to be the same color as this that did not occur to me from in fact there were loads of moments i mean it's really even the break-in is surprising the break-in when you discover you can't have a a bigger digit than a six in these two circles surprised me that having to be um, having to be a three was weird and then and then it was even weirder to discover you could only put the double three circled threes in those two squares i think and then yeah and then finally had the idea around the fours here it's very thematically consistent isn't it it's a series of deductions around where you can place the red circles and each one of them is in its own way very surprising it's brilliant it's a brilliant puzzle it's not easy though let me know in the comments how you got on very interested in the comments always especially when they're kind we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic